All right, guys, welcome back to Bluegill and Bass, where we catch bluegill in the winter and bass in the summer. Um, you guys already know who that is, but we're rocking the GoPro. We might meet up with another one of my friends, but for now, we're just gonna drill some holes, catch some fish, and yeah, we're gonna do a catch clean cook for y'all. We got a few holes, and we've been here before, so we know where the better spots are for catching the bigger bluegills, but there's also a lot of dinks we have to go through to get to them. And yeah, we'll see you guys on the GoPro. Set her down. Got him. Ooh. That's a good one. Drive back down there. Drive back down. We're doing a catch clean cook today, so we're keeping this guy. Uh, he's like just at a catch clean cook, but we'll keep him for now. Um, full of snow, but good first one. Throw him on the ice. Dude, I just jigged up and I had him. Didn't even feel a bite. Oh my God. Dude, look at that thing coming up. You got... That's all bite. Dude, that thing was fast as hell. Oh, he's coming up again. I think that's kind of scary. Got him. He's dink. He's tiny, whatever it is. Huh? He's, he's, he's not, not either. either. He's dropped down. Yeah, pretty well. But he came up fast for it for some reason. I thought it was a perch. Oh yeah, he's coming up. Look out. Got him. What? Oh, it's, it's a, a crappie. It's a baby crappie. First crappie of the year for me. But still, nothing to admire. He's bloated. Just kidding. Son, or, is, or your hand's just cold. <laughs> so you need him to warm up. So you're like, I need to drill a hole. Got him. Got him. Got him. Big that's an eater. That's an eater. Uh, he's close. Probably not. <laughs> that was not. an eater. I'm I will joking. stab you in the foot. <laughs> Calm down. That didn't even look like that big of a mark. Little guy. Just kidding, but we got oh, two. Dude. No, dude. It finishes him. Dude. We're not throwing that in the car while bloody. No. It just <laughs> I got that recorded. You're retarded, dude. Adam? I don't understand how they bite and then they're not on. Do you wish you would just let them both go? No. Oh my god, do you see how fast that's going? Oh, he's on you. Oh, that's a good one. My reel broke. My reel just fell in there. My reel just fell in the water. Trader, do you have to leave? Look, my reel just fell Trader, in the water. Trader, we just caught like another keeper, but Elijah's reel just broke. It didn't just break, it fell in the water. Dude, what is happening? Now I, ro I lost a rod and a reel. I gotta take this one off. Well, my reel just broke and my friend has to leave. So this is kind of depressing. This looks so retarded. All right, we're back in business. I didn't really show off that fish, but it's another keeper. There's a bunch. Oh, that's a big mark. We got two down there. We got four in the hole now. That one looks decent. Yeah, that one that's on you right now. Did he have it? Yeah. I don't think he'll bite again. He's definitely traumatized. <laughs> he doesn't know what's going on. Oh, he's, oh, he's hungry. That might be a perch. That's, that's a perch. Oh. oh. No. Vegan. Vegan. Get him off the transducer because that's how they go back in. That's a keeper. He was hungry, dude. Yeah, what do Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Luckily, I can't feel anything in my fingers. Come hey, on. That's a big mark, dude. Oh, my God. This is so hype. We got two in this hole, two keepers in this hole, and two in the other one. It's another keeper. That's got to be. It's giant. Tallin' it, for it. It works too. I'm tallin' for it. Honestly, dead stick. It seems like it's working every time. Yeah, because I'm shaking. That one's big. Look at that He's thing. He's already on you. Get him. Oh my God, dude, that's big. That's big. big. Did he snap off? Feels big. Was it a giant bluegill? Yeah. Literally giant, bigger than What happened other. there? What happened at the hole? I don't know. I was just getting ready to grab him, and then this thing was in the way. Oh my god, that felt big. Yeah, I know. Was yeah. it bigger than those? A bit, like, like a few inches bigger than those ones. That's, dude, that's huge. Yeah, it was big. I would mount that thing. Just kidding. Oh my god. They're fired up now. 
Fagan's out of there. All right, y'all, as much as I do want to keep fishing, I'm going to head out because I do have four keepers here. The fish were really biting hard at the end. When we first got here, the bite was on, and then the midday lull, obviously, we didn't catch much. And then also at the end of the day, which was like literally the past 30 minutes, we've just been hammering them. Definitely caught the most today out of any other time. We've caught probably 40 plus all together. And I will say the next few times we come out here, we'll probably just come out in the afternoon. We're really still going to have a big portion of this video to film, which is actually me cooking these fish. So I'll show you guys the fish right now. Here's the keepers we caught. That one's not as big. These two females aren't as big, but then the two males are a little bit nicer. They're just kind of thrown on the ice. They don't look nice and organized, but I'll do a thumbnail once I get home. Yeah, we're all packed up, and I'll see you guys once I'm back home, and I'll do a catch and cook. All right, guys, we're back in the house. Um, we're in my basement, actually, if you're wondering. I had all the bluegills line up re really nicely um, for a nice picture, but um, these two are still kind of alive. They were flopping in the background as I was doing the intro, so. We got some really nice ones. I'd say that that one's definitely the biggest. That one's second biggest, third biggest, and then that's the smallest. But I still think that they're all decent sized. We could have kept more fish, but in the end I probably caught like seven or eight keepers, but I just didn't want to keep more than four only because I'm the only one eating them. And this will fill me up, like I'll be stuffed after eating all this. I got a bowl of cold water for the fillets. I got a bag for the guts and my fillet knife. I'm gonna sharpen that up. But yeah, I'm about to set you guys up on the tripod so you can watch me do a little catch and cook action. So yeah guys, keep in mind, clearly I'm not a professional or anything. But to start out, you always want to sharpen your knife. And then I'm going to put all the bluegills aside besides the one I'm going to be working on. So I'm going to start out with the ones that are actually dead. This one's definitely dead. It's bleeding. Okay, guys, I'm going to put timestamps in this video, which means you can click um, throughout. If you know how to fillet a bluegill and you're just entertained by the video and you want to skip to the eating part, there'll be timestamps below so that you can just skip to it. But if you want to know how to fillet a bluegill, I'm going to show you guys right now. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to make... A lot of the head meat is up here, which I usually miss personally, and I know a lot of other people do. So you're gonna wanna make, you're gonna wanna lift up this fin and right behind the fin and make a little angle cut. And then after that, you flip it around. Once you hit the backbone, you go down and you just really gently go across that um, backbone line. Calm down there, Bal. And yeah, I'm um, sorry I didn't talk much throughout that, but you basically want to work, you want to make a slit down. It's pretty simple. You make a slit down by the head, right behind the head, by the um, gill right there. And then you cut right here. You see that's where most of your meat is, up by the head. And then you want to avoid the rib cage here because that's a lot of bones. And then you kind of like make a flat cut here once you pass the rib cage and then you just work your way down. Uh, I missed a tiny bit of meat, but it's not bad at all. I'm not gonna starve or anything. I'm just trying to do this as fast as possible. And then yeah, you're basically at the tail, flip it over and you just fillet it off of the meat. Try to bend the knife down. You see what I'm doing? I'm flexing the knife right here so that it's as flush as possible with the skin so that you don't miss any meat. Cause this is where I usually mess up. And then yeah, you just fillet it off of the skin. So yeah, there's your meat. Uh, I missed a little bit on this guy with, on the back because I accidentally cut a little too far up, but it's fine. If you ever mess up, just skip that part because it's not worth ruining your whole fillet just for a little piece of meat like that. Like I could have ruined my whole fillet just from that. But yeah, there's your skin. You're all done with one side. And obviously they every bluegill has two sides to them. Yeah, that's basically how to fillet a bluegill. Um, I'm gonna do the rest of this side and then the other three fish. And I'm gonna do a quick time lapse. So hopefully you guys enjoy that while my, while my sump pump is running. So sorry about that.
right, y'all, I'm officially done. I'm holding up the tripod right now, Brett. It looks super weird, but that's a little finished pile of fish after we fillet them. This is our little bowl full of um, fillets. And yeah, my hands are nasty, so I'm gonna go wash my hands, clean this up while I'm at it, and then, um, yeah, I'll get you guys then. All right, everyone, um, here's a little trick I do. Um, I'm actually not eating these right now. I just realized that we're having venison tonight, and my mom already has the crack pack out, so there's no debating eating these tonight. So I'm um, definitely gonna eat these tomorrow. So if you're ever gonna eat meat the next day, I always recommend um, putting it in a bag with milk. It just keeps it nice and fresh. In my opinion, just Soaking them in milk overnight just makes them taste a little better. Guys, just think about it. What would it what it looks like it tastes better? Soaking it in milk or soaking it in that overnight? Yeah, that's what I thought. So yeah, we're just gonna throw that in there. Let that just soak in milk overnight. And yeah, I'll see y'all tomorrow. Well guys, it's the next day. Um I don't have a cameraman, so I set you guys up on the tripod. But I'm gonna turn you guys around and um, I'm gonna show you guys kind of what I do to prepare. This is the milk and fish fillets that we made last night. The first thing I need to do is take these out of the bag. Actually, no, wait. The first thing I actually have to do, so here we got some crispy oats. It's off-brand cereal, but anything crumb like crack, a lot of people use crackers. You can buy certain breading, but I just like to use some sort of cereal. It doesn't really matter what, because you can't taste much. It's more just for like the crunch. This is gonna be your breading. Basically, whatever you decide to use, it doesn't matter but it's your preference. You take a little bag, bunch in there. Depends on which fish you have. About halfway is usually good, maybe a little more. I never want to run out of breading, but then you want to take all the air out of it so there's no air in it. Then you just crunch it up until it's all just powder, basically. Now I would say that's about good. So I have the heat on relatively low. And you just want to fill the bottom of the pan. You don't want to deep fry it unless you have a deep fryer. Who knows, you can do whatever you want. And while that oil's heating up, we're gonna go back over here. So we got our breading, we got our fish. You should probably take that out of the bag, but you might want to roll up your sleeves for this one. So then you take an egg. This is what the fish is gonna stick to so that it actually sticks to the breading. So then you're gonna do the same thing with the egg as you did with the breading, you're gonna just wanna mush it up. The egg's obviously a lot easier, but. Milkly drenched fish, and you're gonna take one piece at a time, obviously. That's a pretty nice, that's a pretty nice filet right there. Oh, the milk almost spilled. Then you throw it in the egg wash, nice and moist. Then you put it in your breading. Make sure to get the least amount of extra egg in there as possible. You leave a little bit of air in there. And I like to do like two or three pieces at a time. It's a little faster, but try to get as much milk off as possible. Dunk it in here, get all that full of egg. Squeeze off as much extra egg as possible. You just want it nice and damp. Then it goes right back in the breading. Okay, so our oil should be hot enough now. And that's what it should look like if you're if you did it properly. Let's focus camera, come on. There we go. Nice and breaded, there's no spots missed. And um, that's what it should look like if you do it properly. And the grease is nice and hot. I might have to turn down the temperature a little bit. And then you got this one, number two, going in hot. And now we wait. I'll pick up the camera once they're a little bit more fried. All right, I think it's time to flip now. Oh, those are a little bit crispy. Yeah, sorry about that guys. Definitely had the oil way too hot. Um, I was only gone for a few minutes, but it's fine. They're a little bit burnt, but I think it'll be fine. These ones will turn out much better. I'll actually watch them a little better. I definitely had the oil a little too hot. All right guys, a lot of the pieces kind of flaked off. They usually don't do that, but this time I was using a weird spatula that's like kind of pointy. So it was like stabbing into the fish and ripping them apart. But as you can see, like the pieces are still like cut up. So I lost a lot of meat, but I still have easily enough to fill me up. 
Alright guys, almost 24 hours later, I'm finally eating the fish that I caught. I usually eat them with like barbecue sauce or something. Some people say it like is disrespectful or something, I don't even know. But to me it tastes better that way. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to try it um, without barbecue sauce. And then with barbecue sauce and tell my opinion. I don't know. But here we go, first bite. This is not the burnt one, this is the um, nice and flaky one, perfectly cooked. Honestly, it's edible. I can definitely taste the um, crispy oats. If you have it with cereal, it adds a little bit of sugar and it tastes a little better. And it just makes the makes the fish taste a little less like fish. It tastes more enjoyable, I'll just say that. But Okay, this one was better for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, it's really good, but I'm going to try it with some barbecue sauce. Let's see if I can tell the difference. If you guys want to know um, my favorite barbecue sauce, mine is Sweet Baby Ray's. I don't know if that's focusing or not. The camera's too far away, but... Yeah, my kitchen is, like, built really weird, so the camera is, like, literally 10 feet away from me. It's just zoomed in as much as possible. So the audio might be a little bit bad since it's a big echo, but it's fine. I'm a little bit ashamed that I burnt two pieces, but it, I think it'll be fine. I'm actually going to try a burnt one right now while the barbecue sauce is falling down to the bottom of the, of the container. Here's a burnt one, nice and crispy. Look at that. I don't know if it's focusing or not, but yeah, it's nice and burnt. Guys, oh, I have to get up for this. Look at that. Literally the white meat with the black burnt breading. Look at that. But anyway, it doesn't taste that bad. Honestly, it's burnt. Um, I'm a little embarrassed to do that, especially in front of the camera, but it's fine. Never mind. It's definitely not fine. It's still whatever. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this catch and cook. Let me know down in the comments what I should do a catch and cook on next because I actually really enjoyed this. I thought it was a fun video to put together. But in case you guys were wondering how I was actually recording that, when I say the tripod was 10 feet away, I literally meant it was 10 feet away from where I was eating. That was kind of weird, but um, you gotta do what you gotta do for the video. But I think it was pretty good besides the fact that I burnt a little piece. I never had any bones or ribs or anything messed up with the filleting that I ended up um, choking and dying on, so that's good. Here's a little aftermath. We got a giant mess in the kitchen right now. So I'm gonna be cleaning that up for about an hour because I get distracted super easily. And even better, it's snowing. She was begging the whole time. I had to re-say what I was saying like 10 different times because she was whining. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Comment below what I should catch and cook next, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.